Hi everybody, welcome to the DIY Keyboards Workshop. Today we have a PCB in for repair from one of the users in our Discord. He was asking for some help. It's a K65 uh, RGB hot swap PCB. And what had happened was one of the sockets uh, when he went to insert the switch got pushed off the PCB and took the pads with it. And so it's a really simple repair. Unfortunately this is like my third attempt trying to record this video because uh, I've been having problems with my recording setup um, stuttering and having issues. So unfortunately the repair is already done, but I'm going to show how I did it so that if you have a similar problem you can follow along and figure it out. Um, it's really pretty straightforward. So the first thing was, um, this is the hot swap in question right here. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Come on now. There we go. Or not. So this guy was pushed off and unfortunately the camera does not want to focus at that height. And what I did was I simply used um, some gel uh, Gorilla Glue CA to uh, keep the socket physically back in place. So I just put a drop under the socket, put that back in place, and gave it a few minutes to cure. In the meantime, I took some 28 gauge ribbon cable that I had lying around, took about an inch long piece and cleared both ends in a red and green so that we could kind of see the difference. Once that was done, it was just time to figure out how the rows and columns were arranged so that we could make the correct repair. And for that, you just need a multimeter. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the multimeter and we're going to switch it to the continuity test, which is down, usually it's down here in the bottom. And it's, uh, the little symbol is like a, an arrow with a plus sign. And then usually there's a little uh, sound icon because when you touch your leads, you get sound. And the tone just lets you know that those two pads are uh, pieces of metal are connected electrically. And so what I found after looking at this board, um, the row connection actually goes, the, the diodes are on the columns. Okay, so a lot of times it's the opposite on a, on a enthusiast keyboards. Um, but in this case, the, the way it's laid out, the hot swaps connect across the row on the left side. Okay, so now I took the left pad here and I've connected it to the one next to it. So when we test down in there, um, anywhere in this row, we'll get a tone showing that that is now back in series with the rest of these. Um, for the other one, uh, basically on, on a keyboard matrix, you have a series of switches laid out in a grid, columns and rows. And for uh, one of those directions, you'll have diodes on each switch. And so on this board, it's on the columns and the output from the switch goes to the input side of the diode. Diodes are essentially a one-way uh, electrical gate that keeps the electricity from flowing backwards through the circuit. So once it passes out of the switch through the diode, it can't go back in. And that prevents uh, ghosting. When you press keys, they can't flow backwards through the network and um, cause problems. So all we need to do is connect our output side from the switch to the input side of the diode and we're good to go. So we left um, the right hand side of the socket here and moved up here. This is the diode for this particular uh, switch and it's on the left hand side right here. So we soldered right to that pad and now when we, we check there we've got continuity there but we won't get a tone on the other side of the diode because it can't flow back through that diode. And that's all there is to it. So um, the repair was made now we just need to add some switches. So what I did was I took a few um, Gateron reds that I had lying around and I trimmed off the legs with a set of flush cutters. The, um, the PCB, as you can see, does not have holes for the five pin switches. It only has the center pin hole. So I just took flush cutters, trimmed those flush, and now they'll fit right in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to load those up. And they just press gently in place. Um, if, if you're having trouble fitting it in, something's wrong. Um, go back and figure out what so that you don't break things and cause yourself more repairs. There we go. Once they're all fitted, we can test the board. Now I have this connected to the PC here. And this board has got a lot of RGB. It's got backlighting and underglow. There we go. So there's plenty of light coming off this thing. 
It's a really nice little PCB. I hope it works out for them. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to KeyboardTester.com and we'll test and make sure those keys are operating properly. Okay, so here we are at KeyboardTester.com. If you've never used it, it's a simple online tool that lets you test your keyboard and make sure everything is functioning as required. Um, basically, when you press a switch, uh, it'll highlight the switch, make a little click sound, and then that switch will stay lit. So you can see which ones have operated properly and which ones haven't. And here, uh, switch number one, the, the one key was our one that was in question. So we're just going to go ahead and tap on that. <clears throat> and there it fires off, no problem. Two works, escape works. So it looks like everything is operating correctly, and the repair is finished. So, uh, hopefully that helps somebody. Um, it's a pretty common problem. The, the PCB pads are not really all that strong, and if they take a good physical hit, they tend to pop right off. So, um, if you do have that problem, you know, it's a simple fix. just takes a few minutes and a little bit of patience. You'll be back in business. If there's uh, any questions, be sure to let me know. And you can always come to our Discord and get some help there, too. There's a lot of guys there willing to help. It's been a really great resource for a lot of people. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll catch you next time.